Hey guys and welcome back to another Unregined 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to create it so we can press and or hold the same button to have different functions. So just pressing or tapping E for example will maybe interact with something so read something or look at it or inspect it maybe and then holding E is going to actually pick it up. That's just an example but essentially pressing will do one thing, holding will do another. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So in my example what I'm going to be doing is pressing space is going to jump, you'll see in the top left there it says press and if I were to hold space we're going to fly as you can see here. Now it said press at the end as well, that's just because of how we're setting up which I'll obviously show you later on and if I were to hold it again we're going to stop walking because it's disabling the flying. I haven't set up proper flying mechanics because again that's not the purpose of this tutorial. All I'm doing is pressing it, I jump, holding it, I fly so we have two different functions for this so we can do two different things based on if we press or hold a button. So this is what we're we'll going to be going over and setting up today so without further ado let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up the blueprint in which you want this code to be in. So again this is obviously going to change for you dependent on what the code actually is so again if you're maybe inspecting and picking up an item you might want to do this in your player blueprint if you're using blueprint interfaces or maybe in that specific item which you're interacting with. Again, choose where you want to do this code. I'm going to do mine in the character blueprint because again for me it is jumping and flying. So for me it's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. Now you'll see here I already have the jump code which obviously comes as standard with the third person character. So it's the jump button which for me is space, pressed is jump, released is stop jumping. This is what I'm going to be modifying. What I'm going to do is just delete these two nodes for the moment so we just have the input action for jump. So the first thing we want to do is create a variable. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here and I'm going to name this one is holding and I'm also going to specify space question mark. Space is just the key I'm using so if you're using E you can maybe say is holding E or F or whatever it is or just is holding but I'm going to specify which button it is. I'm going to press enter to name it like that. Making sure this is again a boolean value so it's true or false. With this variable we're going to set it off of pressed and we're going to tick it so it's true and we're going to set it off with released, leaving it unticked so it is false. So when we first press our button, it's setting is holding space to true, and when we release, it's going to set it to false. Because if we just press our key, so if we just press it down, what's going to happen is it's going to set to true and immediately set to false. But if we hold it down, when we press it, this will set to true, and because we haven't released it yet, it will not be set to false until we let go. And until we let go, we are technically holding it down. So that's why we're doing this, just so we actually know if the player is or isn't holding down a button. Now there are other ways of doing this as well, however this is the most efficient and the best way I found of doing it for this particular code. After this, off of pressed, so set to true, what we're going to do is get a re-triggerable delay, like so. It's re-triggerable because you might press it, let go, then hold it down. We want to make sure this does actually reset so it can go in again. Otherwise it's not going to work, it will just do it for the first time you pressed it, we want to start the delay every time we press it. And the duration here is how long you want the player to have to hold down the button for. So for me, I'm going to set it to half a second or 0 0.5. I think I mispressed there. 0 0.5 like so. So for me, the player has to hold it down for half a second. You can obviously set this up to be whatever value you'd like. Then after this, I'm going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that into the completed there. And the condition is going to be our is holding Boolean value, which we created earlier. So you can just connect it straight into the set value there as that is going to just extract the boolean variable. Off of false, so we're not holding, we don't want to do anything. Off of true, if we are holding, we want to then do our code for the function of holding the button. So again, for me, I want this to be toggling on and off, flying. Whatever it is for you, just do that code here. So true, I'm going to get a flip-flop so I can toggle between the values of A and B, with A being flying. So I'm going to get the character movement, set movement mode, and I'm going to set this to flying connecting that into the A there. Now I'm going to again set the movement mode for B at this time and I'm going to set this just back to walking so it is resetting and we're not flying anymore. Again I'm not going to go over this part too much because that's not the purpose of this video. Flying I have got separate videos for if you want to go into that further. So that is now the function of holding it down so we can do what we want. But how do we do it for just pressing it? That's very simple, we just do it off of released. So off of released is holding set to false we're just going to do the code for pressing. So for me, that is jump, which is an already made function for us. So again, off of pressed, after the delay and true of the branch, this is the function 
and the code for holding. So let me type that holding function. And this here off of released is going to be the pressed function. So I hope that makes sense. That is where you do the different parts of code for you. So these parts in the comments are the bits you will need to change to customize the code for what you want it to do specifically. But that's what I want to do for me. So I'm gonna compile and save that. And this should now be the code working perfectly for us. So if we to hit play, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press space and you'll see I'm jumping. And if I hold space, I don't jump, but I should now be in fly mode. So if I had to walk up the stairs and walk off, you see I'm flying. And if I hold space again, I'm gonna now just fall down to the floor like so. Again, I press space, I jump, hold space, I fly. And again, if hold space again, I'm gonna to toggle off the flying like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up perfectly so we can have different functions for when we press or hold a button. So in my example, if I press space, I'm going to jump. And if I hold space, I'm going to start flying or hold it again, I'm then going to stop flying because it's just a toggle on and off for me. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.